bless all the, all the residents and watch over us and guide us. And Lord, we also come to you tonight as the great healer. We ask your healing powers over not only the United States, but the entire world in this tomorrow, but the virus that's going around. And Lord, we just pray for your blessing and we pray for your healing powers. And we ask these things. Amen. Salute.
who incurs the cost of moving their scrap. After the agent makes a decision as to whether or not it's derelict or intact, then the property owner would be authorized to remove it and scrap it if it was declared to be derelict at his expense. Uh, I assume that perhaps there might be some salvage value to the mobile home that has been determined to be derelict. If it's intact, it's actually there's a procedure to sell it to recover both past rent and the cost to get it removed. Okay. So property owner. Property owner bears the expense. The county bears the expense of the local government agent uh, and is reimbursed only by the amount of the fee that's charged. So if we had this and say the property owner doesn't do that, would we go in and then after a while and then clean it up, the county clean it up? Well, I would hope that, I would hope not, but yes, it's a practical matter that might have to happen if it becomes um, if it becomes derelict to the extent that it's dangerous to the health, safety, and welfare of the public generally, used as a crack house or something of that nature. Any other questions? Would anybody in the audience like to speak on this particular matter before we close the time of the Please come out, Mr. President. <coughs> Uh, personally, uh, Catoosa County, seen kills. The, if you say somebody wanted to buy that uh, trailer, is there any ordinance on the age limit that that would prevent somebody from moving it? Thank you. Uh, I don't think that the ordinance addresses that. Uh, the act. Does address the fact that you can move this mobile home if it's found to be impacted. Point where this guy's the ones that are in the basically. Yes. Have it. And then we do have rules in the county that you can't let a single flag or things like that in certain places. And it wouldn't, it clearly would not affect our local ordinances regarding zoning, land use ordinances. Any other? I'd like to close our public hearing. Thank you, Skip. And I'd like to give the clerk a call to roll and start our regular meetings. Mr. Stevens? Here. Mr. Cutler? Here. Chairman Henry? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Long? Here.
serious problems associated with intellectual, developmental disabilities or public knowledge and understanding. And whereas the potential for citizens with intellectual, de uh, developmental disabilities to function more independently and productively must be fostered. And whereas the Lookout Mountain Community Services improves the quality of life for citizens of Catoosa, Chattooga, Dade, and Walker counties, uh, providing services to intellectually, developmentally disabled persons and their families. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Commissioners of Catoosa County, Georgia, do hereby proclaim March 2020 as Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month in Catoosa County and urge that citizens of Catoosa County give their full support and uh, to efforts toward enabling people with developmental disabilities to live productive lives and achieve their potential. Adopted and approved this third day of March 2020, Catoosa County Board of Commission Commissioners by Stephen M. Henry, Chairman, Test, Melissa, and Anna. I know you're, you're not here just for this early, but you know it's best for later seeing the health people around here. I want you up here and everybody else involved in this. Come with me, sir. Sir, let's turn it down. letting me come and speak today. I'm Chris McKeever, the Executive Director of the Sixth Calvary Museum. And before there was a city at Fort Oglethorpe, there was the Army Post at Fort Oglethorpe from 1902 through 1947. The 7th, 11th, and 12th Calvary all spent time at Fort Oglethorpe, but it was the 6th Cav that arrived on July 4th, 1919 and called the Post home until 1942. Spending 23 years at the same Army Post is almost unheard of, and they consider Fort Oglethorpe their home. After the 6th Cav left to prepare for World War II, the Post became home to the 3rd Women's Army Corps Training Center, which was the largest in the country. Over 50,000 women from across the nation reserved their basic training there. Important military history was made during the Army Post's 45-year existence, and that history needs to be preserved in those stories told. The museum opened in the old health department building on Barton Heart Circle in 1981, and I was hired as the museum staff person in 2005. In 2010, the museum was asked if they could use help from Catoosa County 
in the amount of $150,000 from the 2009 SPLAS campaign? And if so, what would we use the money for? A wheelchair lift to the second floor, three handicap accessible restrooms, catering kitchen, and the materials to rebuild the tank enclosure were identified. And all of those tasks were completed in November of 2015. And why were these improvements important? The museum was not handicap accessible, so our ability to bring in group tours and educational programs was severely limited with restrooms and access to the second floor. So if you're a group tour, we sent you to the school next door to use the restroom, and that just didn't bode well. The renovations that the 2009 SPLAS paid for have allowed the museum to host hometown teams, which was the Smithsonian Institute's Museum on Main Street exhibit in 2016, and we bring 1,200 fifth graders in for school days each fall. We host vintage baseball, conduct painting for a purpose fundraising art classes, and we act as Fort Oglethorpe's Visitor Center. March 21st is our Living History Day and program with Dr. Nicholas speaking on the last days of the German Army in World War II. That's Free Museum Saturday. You'll want to come out and join us to uh, see the living historians and all those military vehicles. Then on uh, Tuesday, April 14th, you can see the 6 documentary, which is about the only all African-American Women's Army Corps Battalion to serve overseas in World War II. And once again, why is that important? Because the 855 women received their overseas training at Fort Oglethorpe. And when the documentary film opens, it starts with, it all started in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Uh, both of these educational programs are free to attend, and they're ideal for students and teachers, and especially if they uh, need to get extra credit for any of their subjects. Our fundraising banquet with General George Patton's grandson is April the 18th. My purpose in speaking tonight is to update you on the museum and our upcoming events and projects, but most importantly, it is to thank the Catoosa County Board of Commissioners, past and present, for your faith and confidence in the importance of the Sixth Cavalry Museum and the leadership of our dedicated staff and volunteers. The next time you're out and about, <coughs> Please stop in to visit and show me your Pines Library card because you get in for free. That's one of our cool things that we're doing. And uh, just in case you should happen upon any other funding through SPLAS that has not been called for, by all means give us a call and we'll spend it very wisely. <laughs> but we do, uh, this has been a long time coming. I should come every year and update you on what we've done and also to thank you because the improvements to our building have made such a difference. Thank you for having me.
A uh, patient showed a brief improvement, but only for a few seconds. The patient was transferred to the ambulance where advanced life support measures were continued while they out to the hospital. Uh, firefighter Atkinson assisted the EMS unit uh, to the hospital. While en route to the hospital, the patient started breathing on its own with a pulse. And today the patient's alive after a short stay in the hospital. At this time, we'd like to commend the efforts of these individuals with the Life Saving Award. At this time, I would ask uh, Lieutenant Siler, Firefighter Mack, and Atkinson to come forward, along with Lieutenant Rowan, and also paramedics uh, Miranda Graham and AMT Parker. I think this showcases too the work of all three agencies to, to work together to save the life. I'd like to commend the sheriff for <clears throat> his efforts in public safety uh, by placing AEDs on all the sheriff's cars. Uh, his commitment to public safety uh, is commendable. As the fire chief and a resident of Caducey uh, County, thank you very much, Sheriff. Uh, to the medics and firefighters, thank you.
Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very
So that was taken care of. So the three people I need to thank, thank all three of you. But again, I like the right to speak. I would like to wrap to face the public and you all. Therefore, that goes their little thing in for over there. But again, I appreciate the quick response and the votes. Thank you very much.
Chairman, Commissioners, uh, the first item I have is the proposed approval of the renewal of the transit, auto, and umbrella insurance. So, Transaid historically has had a separate policy for their automobiles and had to do with um, issues with GDOT. Um, however, um, Barton, our insurance um, rep with Star Matthews, has discovered that actually we can move those vehicles over to Liberty Mutual and actually we just need to keep the umbrella separate. So um, the renewal was up with Liberty Mutual on the automobiles, but we're going to renew and then it's going to be added to our large policy that we have countywide and it'll then become part of that renewal policy, which means it'll come back up again in September when the countywide policy comes up. The umbrella policy needs to be kept separate because they require a larger umbrella coverage than the county has and for the county as a whole to get that large umbrella in which it, it's cost prohibitive, we don't need it as a whole. But GDOT requires a larger umbrella, so that's why that policy is kept separate. So in total, of course this is an annual, it, it, these are annual figures, but actually come September this will renew again. So we're really only going to pay a prorated amount of this. But the total renewal is $10,539, which is slightly less than what we paid last year, 11287 the savings actually is just due to the fact that we did, if you may remember back in September when we had our renewals, we did a little bit of changes on the deductibles. So we actually are seeing a little bit of savings on this because of the deductible changes we had. So I'm just asking um, for your approval to renew these two policies. We have a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. So that's what Martin does with Star Matthews. He actually um, seeks, I wouldn't really call it bids, but he gets proposals from other um, from various carriers to see who's the best. And you may remember when we did this back in September, um, we had several carriers that, that came in on board to book, but um, so far Liberty. Now, they haven't always been our carrier. I know for several years we've used Liberty, but we've used, and some of our policies even are under like Travelers, for instance. Um, yeah. So yes, Barton does a really good job with Star Matthews. He's showing a little bit of savings here on the head, so that's why I was asking if that's what y'all did. Thank you. And all that favor of approving, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carol. Yes, so the second item, commissioners, for um, your review and <coughs> hopefully approval is to um, add a particular bank service. So um, currently when we um, take deposits to the bank, where it's you know, we're just going to the bank. But obviously it's taking time that we, you know, we've got to get in the car, we've got to drive to the bank, we've got to wait in line. Um, and so it's taking staff time. It's not very far from the bank, but it still takes staff time. It's rather inefficient. Um, so there is a, um, a device that's called a remote capture de device that um, we've looked into that uh, Alicia suggested that we look into. We had um, Rick Partain and some other people from the bank come and discuss different options. So this remote capture device is something that we think is very useful. Um, it basically is a scanner that sits on the desk and you scan the checks through, and so they're like automatically deposited. Now obviously we can't, we can't do that with cash, <clears throat> excuse me, because the, the cash machine part is that it doesn't work for us because it's, it's kind of costly. But we don't actually get that much cash in um, most of our funds that we get, if they're not electronic, are gonna come by check. So we have a policy for how much cash we're allowed to keep in the safe. So we should we think that we should be able to go, move from around three to four trips to the bank weekly to basically going to the bank on Fridays. So we feel like that's going to be a big staff savings 
um, which of course just increase efficiency, plus the money is deposited more quickly because you get rid of the float. Um, obviously it does come with a cost, and the estimated cost of the scanners are just $30, that's a one-time fee. And then there are recurring annual costs of about $880 a year.
uh, had in the contract that the city <coughs> would purchase or would reimburse the county if we purchased the fire truck uh, to the amount of 450000 And so we have located the demo truck. Uh, that's really a good deal. I like these demos. They're pretty good deals. Uh, this one is a 1998 model. Uh, it's got 7,600 miles on it. Did I say 1998? <laughs> I wrote down 1998. So, why don't you? 2018. Do you have that brand of my hand in here? 2018. I don't know why I wrote that before. Two year difference. I guess so. Anyway, 2018. I was thinking what we were replacing. No wonder it's a discount price. So, anyway. Um, but they, the company is still offering a full three-year warranty on that apparatus, which is really an exceptional deal. Uh, the price of this is three hundred and seventy-six thousand six hundred seventy-five, and uh, out of the four hundred and fifty that is under the, the, the agreement between the city and the county. Yeah, motion approved. Motion. Second. equipment for the apparatus, which would total somewhere around uh, 50000 for hose, extrication tools, and, and uh, force entry tools and all that. And it'll be 100% paid back by the city? Yes, up uh, to the 450. Yeah. And that was identified in the intergovernmental agreement that we all signed? Yes, sir. All right. All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 If 
the property owner could not be identified, we had an obligation to publish that one time in the Caduce County News. Is that going to cover the, uh, is that $250 they're going to cover that kind of thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's really what it's for? Yes. All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Thank you, Skip. Mm -hmm. Do I have any commissioner comments? Mm -hmm. We're out here so long. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, Chief, appreciate you bringing our life safety awards before we give them share for you. And I'll recognize them. Also, uh, had a lot of phone calls from people in the county and just both cities and all asking about the playground over at Gilbert Stevens Park. It is in process, but with the rain, it's backed off. But uh, it should be ready probably at the end of March to the uh, first part of April there. So uh, there will be a real good <coughs> I'll just give everybody an update where they will know that it, it is in process. It's slowly moving, but it's just delayed with the weather. Thank everybody for coming out and would appreciate continued prayers for our neighbors in Nashville. Um, I've got a lot of family in Nashville. My cousin, who is slash my baby brother, is a uh, fire chief. And so he's, he's got his hands full. His wife, interestingly enough, is the lead engineer for Nashville Electric. So she's got her hands full. So if you just keep our family and then Nashville. Sorry, I was running late, and I, I do want to thank all of our first responders. I'm glad Sheriff not giving me a ticket when he said he'd come in with it. And I hope I'm not on this to-do list in the morning. Uh, I, I just come back from a couple of days in D.C. and I want to say how much I love it. It's, it's nice to be back home. We've got a great place. And I appreciate every one of you that work hard to make it a great place. So, not a person in this room does not treat me to have greater. Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to thank our first responders. The bucket does a great job for us. The sheriff, fire, 911, thanks, thanks to you all. It makes our county a lot safer. Uh, Chris McKeever, you do a wonderful job at the, at the museum. It's very interesting. If people haven't gone through it, I encourage them to do so. Uh, and also the library. The library is one of the better libraries in North Georgia, I think, so, if, not, if, not, if not the entire state. So thank you so much for your work. And that also. I'd like to address just one little issue that was brought up. Uh, our last meeting that we had a zoning issue uh, that uh, occurred in District 3. And I had some citizens in District 3 uh, contact me and ask me to please vote against the zoning issue that became, that uh, came up. Uh, to follow their wishes, which I try to do when people in District 3 contact me and, and voice opinions. Uh, I voted against it, so I followed the wishes of people living in my district. So I but I represented their best values and went into District 3. So thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I thank all the emergency responders and all the departments and 911. And, and I'd like to thank the, our uh, recreation department director and their employees for what they do. You know, uh, we got some great numbers that came out. Uh, we had goals of around 500 kids that signed up, and I, I can see 800 plus, you know, and it's just grown so much, and I, I think we're giving the kids an opportunity, you know, unfortunate kids in this county, they don't have an opportunity to do that, you know, to go and do it for recreation activities. That's what, that's, that's prevention, that's prevention of our future. In other words, we're stopping a lot of bad things from happening by getting kids involved, and I, I really, you know, encourage uh, if you can, volunteer for your local community, you know, in recreation and different things, a library. I mean, it's, that's what, you know, that's what it's all about is trying to empower the youth so that they have a better life than what we have. You know, that's, that's really our future. And we, you know, I'm committed to that. And I uh, just want to thank, you know, everybody that's involved with the youth and the future of our county. Because it's great because, you know, we go to different classes. Uh, Mr. Harrison and myself went down 
to Atlanta this week to a class, and we meet a lot of people from different different uh, different locations, and they don't have very many people and things like that, and in their county like we do. We're fortunate here in Duluth County to be you know we're, we're you know God's really blessed us in a lot of ways. I mean, we I know a lot of people. It's not positive to a lot of people, but I'm proud to be a part of it, and I'm proud to be a leader in this county, and I pray that God gives me the opportunity to lead in the future, and hopefully that I do the right decisions and, and look forward to working for you, and, and I hope I get that opportunity to do it in the future. Thank you very much. No way to thank people to Cat. I'm full of Yeah, Appreciate y'all bringing people to Cat. Uh, at this time, we have the executive session for personal. Yes. Commissioner Cutler? Yes. Chairman Henry? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. You are an executive session.